Now from WATN, it's Local 24 This Week with Richard Ransom. Thanks for joining us for Local 24 This Week, where every Sunday at 9 a.m. and 10.35 p.m., we give you the real story behind the big stories. I'll introduce my panel in a moment, but first a look at what's on our plate for today. Residency requirements. It appears there may be a compromise on this contentious issue about where Memphis police officers and firefighters should be required to live. But will it ever get to the voters? He's back. Former state senator and convicted criminal John Ford says he's ready to run for office again. Is this going anywhere? And school voucher fiasco. Governor Bill Lee's pet program has an embarrassing week over whether the voucher dollars given to families will be counted as taxable income. Uh, panel, I also want to uh, ask you some questions about staff changes with the mayor's office. We'll get into that as well. But first, let me introduce all of you. Local 24 News reporter Mike Matthews is here. So is political consultant Susan Adler Thorpe and local 24 political analyst and commentator Otis Sanford. We're going to talk about the residency issue first because we know that always gets viewers and voters excited. Uh, you had a great piece earlier this week, Mike, kind of setting up where things stand right now. So let's watch that together and then we'll have Mike take it over afterwards. Well, this has Memphis Police Director Mike Rawlings almost to the point of talking to himself. He's not doing that. Not yet, anyway. Let's go to one policy. We now have three today, and now we're talking about a fourth. And it's, it's just too much, for, you know, as far as I'm concerned. The city council could easily just approve this and let you voters decide in November. Instead, they've debated every bit of this idea. And remember, people approved the sales tax increase to provide benefits to Memphis Police and Fire in the fall. The only thing that we're asking is to allow the citizens of Memphis to decide. There is no debate that crime is perhaps the number one issue in Memphis. There is no debate that more police officers are needed. We had 100,000 incidents, uh, reported incidents of crime in 2018 in all of Shelby County. 92% of violent crime was in the city of Memphis. I'm about to use a word that is rarely used in politics anymore. Compromise. A plan was offered to let police and fire live within 50 miles of the city and offer them incentives to live inside the city limits. We have one mission here, and that's to put more men and women in uniform on the streets. You're talking about public safety, and we can sit here and we can argue it back and forth, but that's not putting officers on the street, and that's not helping benefit public safety. I'll live with whatever. Uh, this is just very frustrating. Mike, on that day in the newsroom, you told me that you've never seen Mike Rawlings so passionate, so emotional about any one particular issue and frustrated. Yeah, he was just flat worn out because, frankly, a lot of the arguments that the council members are making in this situation, at least to Mike Rawlings, don't make any sense at all. What you have here is one side saying, well, we've got to have these police officers in town because they pay taxes, you see. And if they pay property taxes, well, that's good, but we can't have that property tax escape. Well, we're not talking about tens of thousands of people here. And when you look at their general overall property tax, it's not making that much of a dent at all. That's one thing. The other thing that comes up is we want these people to live in the neighborhoods they patrol. No police officer who works in the areas of South Memphis is going to live in South Memphis. No police officer is going to decide, I think I'll live over in Kansas Street. Not going to happen. So there's a lot of crazy things going on, and all I want is to get it to the ballot. So how serious is this 50-mile compromise? Because it was a 200 yeah. miles, which I never really understood. Was that just a red hearing? And do we honestly think that a cop is going to take a job living east of Nashville? and commute to Memphis every day. No, I don't think they were going to uh, do that. <laughs> but, yeah, but I think the 50-mile thing has a good chance of going through. Because now, you, then you can include DeSoto County and uh, Crittenden County if somebody right. is interested in being an officer. Now, Otis, you've never been a big fan of, of this. No, well, I haven't. And, and it wasn't for any property tax issue. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm in that group that thinks that uh, our police officers, especially, I'm not all that much concerned about the firefighters, but the police officers should be, should at least live in the community where they police. That's, 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 that's me saying that. But I'm not alone on that. Uh, and th th one of the problems here is police officers knowing a community, knowing the people who live in the community, even knowing the sort of the culture of the community. And I don't think you can know that and do the kind of effective policing if you live in, in Water Valley. Well, what about, what about the police officers who live in Bartlett or live in, live in Arlington and they police in Orange Mound? I mean, they, they're, it's a totally different uh, community and neighborhood as opposed to if you lived 
50 miles away in Fayette Can County and you came in and you policed in Frazier. I mean, it's, I think that's, that's, uh, it's a difficult argument. I think, one, the council ought to go ahead and pass something and let the voters decide whether they want police officers I'm to okay live in and outside of Shelby County. We do need more police officers. There are other things we need also, but our police officers many are overworked mm -hmm. and our, our treasury is overburdened. I understand that um, police officers, we pay police officers more than 28 million dollars last fiscal year for overtime that is a lot of money and think of how many police officers we can hire um, if we didn't have to pay that kind of overtime so you know and the, and the argument about people don't pay property taxes or policemen look at all the people who live in desoto county and in crittenden county and who cross the border come to memphis every single day make their money here in Memphis and go back and pay property taxes right. in DeSoto County and But they're Britain not County. arresting you, Susan. Now, that's, that's the problem. What, what, no. They're, they're, what, what do you mean arresting me? We're talking about whether you live here, work about, here, and you, and you, you live in DeSoto well, County. I mean, I mean so, tax them when they come and cross the border. Well, I don't, I don't necessarily have a problem. To me, it's a fallacious argument. I, I don't necessarily have a problem with, with generally what you're saying. But I do think that uh, this issue needs to be debated closely, and I still say that police officers who know a community, and I, and I say Bartlett is, is, is even different from Bahia in Water Valley. It just is, because at least it's in the vicinity and you know a well, little no. bit more about this community. Well, Director Rawlings, later in the week, uh, was asked more questions about this because they had some recruits that they were uh, proud. And you know that's been a nemesis for Jim Strickland. He's for four years has been preaching we're going to have more cops on the streets, yet the net gain has been laughable. They're really right. not very much at all. So, they're saying, look, we're, we're, we're desperate here. We've got to reach beyond Shelby County. And if someone's willing to put their lives on the line for a job, very few jobs ask that of you, uh, that should be enough, whether they live in Water Valley or live in Bartlett well, or uh, they, Mid Midtown. They've debated the stew out of this, okay? They have. They've debated every single issue on this. And for people who have been around for a period of time in this city, every issue they bring up today is the same issue they brought up five years ago, <laughs> ten years ago, when they talked about it then. As it stands right now, you have three different residency policies on the books. This will be number four. That's ridiculous. That's a great point, too. Right now, in the Memphis PD, you can not have any residency requirement right. whatsoever. You could be under the requirement that says you must live in the city of Memphis. You can be under the requirement that says, well, no, you can live in Shelby County. That's sufficient. Now we may have a fourth that says within a 50-mile right. radius. Hey, come on. Well, you know, it, it, we do need more police officers, and I will argue that until the cows come home. But we also need something else. Um, the, the area where they have the greatest increase in crime and problems in juvenile crime. Yep. And, you know, Mark Luttrell, our former Shelby County Mayor, used to say that there are three things about crime, the way you can, you can uh, reduce it. Suppression, which is to arrest them and throw them in jail, or intervention and prevention. And if we can increase our police force and the, if the council would consider in spending a little money in intervention and prevention programs in these neighborhoods and they know where they are, we'd be a much better off as a community, and a safer community, too. Well, let, let me say, you got the final I, word. I, I, am, oh, I am certainly in favor of increasing the police force. We do need more police officers. So let's just let the voters decide this. I'm fine with we'll that. Uh, and it, it all will depend on who's doing the politicking when the voting is happening. Because I guarantee you there will be people out there who will say I, I, the residency requirement, 50 miles might be fine. Or, or, or certainly in the contiguous counties that are around uh, Memphis and Shelby County might be fine. So let's just let the voters uh, decide this and, and we'll be done with it. All right, we'll keep following on it to see what happens. Uh, we're going to take a break because I want to hear what you guys have to think about John Ford. We've all covered him. We've known him for years, decades. He wants to run, for, run again for office. Does he have a chance and you know what? We'll talk about it right after this. Mattress Firm's Black Friday sale starts now. And it's the best time to save on beds. For a limited time, get a king mattress for the price of a queen and a queen for the price of a twin. For savings of up to $600 store-wide. Plus, take home a free adjustable base when you spend just $4.99. 
It's the best deal of the season, so hurry in and beat the crowds to find the bet of your dreams. Your budget stretches further at Mattress Firm. When our veterans thrive, our communities thrive. With your support, our veterans can get career and education opportunities, as well as benefits they've earned. Hello, I'm Congressman David Kustoff. Join me in thanking our nation's veterans. They've given so much in service to our country. Find out how you can support veterans in our community. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. America's veterans are more than a source of pride. They're a source of strength. When our veterans thrive, our communities thrive. With your support, our veterans can get career and education opportunities, as well as benefits they've earned. I'm Senator Marsha Blackburn. Our veterans have given Tennessee so much, and it's time to do something for them. Find out how you can support them right in your community. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Big Pharma is cashing in on one of the South's leading causes of death, diabetes. They are messing with my health, and it's not fair. Medication price gouging is not only costing millions of Americans thousands of dollars, it's costing them their lives. I lost my leg. We have people dying because they can't afford their insulin. Local 24 News anchor Richard Ransom looks at how people are coping with the skyrocketing cost of insulin in Insulin Prices Making Us Sick. Monday at 10 on Local 24 News. You're watching Local 24 This Week with Richard Ransom. People get fired up over residency requirements. They also get fired up anytime they hear the name Ford uh, when it comes to politics in this town. John Ford in particular, because there's quite a history there. Anyone who watches this show is aware of the history, so we won't <laughs> bore you with it. But we were all just talking about among the Fords, uh, he has always been one of the most gracious, honestly, one of the most charming uh, when it comes to sitting down for an interview, but uh, he's also very controversial and it's well earned. Uh, nonetheless, he's also a convicted felon and for bribery charges uh, in federal prison, no, no less. And now he's uh, making it known that he'd like to run for General Sessions court clerk. Uh, but there's a lot of debate whether he can even do that based on state law and what, what's required and comments that the judge made in his exact case when he's put him away mm -hmm. saying, I want to make sure you never run again and mentioned that several times. So I'll let you take this one first, Susan. Well, I, uh, I covered John Ford for many years when I was with the commercial appeal and uh, I have to say he's of all that huge Ford clan, he's just about my favorite. <laughs> Uh, he's certainly colorful. He's very smart, very shrewd, probably outsmarted himself. Um, but his chances, well, first of all, they say he can't run. So if he becomes eligible, his chances of winning are probably next to none. And the name, the name Ford has really lost its appeal in that widespread community that used to support the Fords because half of them are gone and uh, the younger generation really doesn't know who the Fords are. And secondly, John was too controversial when he had the General Sessions Court Clerk's position. If you remember, there was a time when, while he was in office, he was ordered to pay child support for three children who were born to two of his employees in that office. So I'm just not sure that... <laughs> yeah, there, there was that. I think. <laughs> so, it all just comes flowing down. Right? Yeah. I mean, there was MLGW and so, yeah. Yeah. so, mm -hmm. so it, why he would run, I really don't know. Maybe he just wants to be have a little bit more of public limelight, or as we said earlier, this is a Willie Harrington redux. He well, just I, wants to come back to the public bluntly, limelight. Bluntly, I mean, uh, you know, he hasn't been really have any money coming in since he left right. federal prison. It's a six-figure salary job with good benefits and a pension, Otis. Oh, yeah. I mean, and that's a, enough reason to do it. Look at Myron Lowry. He came back and he won a, a seat because Myron Lowry is no John Ford. No. Uh, I agree with everything Susan said about John Ford. He was a very, very shrewd uh, state legislator, state senator, could get things done, had a lot of respect up there before he, you know, got greedy and took money. Um, again, this is a legal issue now, uh, and the courts will decide it, and I think the courts will say uh, I'm not, we're not going to change the state law as a result of this. And so I would be very shocked if he even gets on the ballot. Uh, but the other thing that I'm, uh, I think is wrong, and I said this earlier this week, Richard, is that I, he's not even allowed to vote. And I just think that if you get your, your civil rights restored, 
you should be able to vote, and he can't even vote right now. Uh, so certainly running for a, a general sessions court clerk may not be in the cards for him. If it is, if he does get on the ballot, you can bet there'll be a heavy turnout. How is this different, Mike, from uh, Ricky Pete, who we affectionately called Ricky Repeat in the newsroom, because he was convicted and able to run again, but it's all ba based on when the law was changed, right, and when it took effect. That's right. That's right. And in this situation, uh, you know, you might have people out there who look at John Ford and say, ah, we need a rascal in government. But these are the same people who don't remember him pulling the gun on the Memphis Light Gas and Water employee. They don't remember him getting caught for speeding on Interstate 40, doing triple digits down Interstate 40. They don't remember his problems with his ex-wife who passed away. They don't remember the testimony in court where he said most of his check went for paying the insurance for his children on, the, on their cars. I mean, that's why he had to take this money. It's, it's, it, I think, you know, it's a nice, it's nice, okay, John Ford, okay, isn't that cute? But he's not going to go again. Though this is a job where, you, frankly, he can sit back, take the money, hire an assistant to run the place, and that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, do you think uh, he'll get on the ballot, or do you think this is just a... Uh, it's going to be hard to overturn that law in time, but uh, at one point is these clerk positions are really rogue positions. They should be appointed positions, but we, because of the state constitution requires that we elect these clerks, we have to elect them, and that's what brings up the controversy and it gives a, a road for John Ford to... Uh, come down and try to run again. Yeah, a lot of them become personality contests. Yeah, and you know, I, I'm low to bring age into this, but let's bring age into this. John Ford is 77 years old. Uh, there are a lot of other younger people who are highly qualified, who deserve a chance to move up the ranks in politics and public service in this community, and they are the folks that probably deserve to be on this They ballot. do, but it's not going to be the clerk's position because we already have some older veterans in politics who are lining up to run for the General <laughs> Sessions Court clerk. Just like they did city court? Just the city court, mm -hmm. yeah. exactly. Yeah. Unfortunately. All right, very good. We'll leave it there. When we come back, we're going to talk about a couple more issues. There was some staff shakeup within the Strickland administration as he gets ready to start a second term. And also uh, a big shakeup when it comes to the school voucher program. Is it something that can be taxed or not taxed right after this? When a trucking company tried to offer easy money to a family after their loved one was seriously injured and later died, Nahan Saharovich and Trot said stop, and NST trial lawyers headed straight to the courtroom. After taking over 45 depositions, NST went to trial when a trucking company still wouldn't pay what's fair. Right before closing arguments, we got them to pay our client's demand of $6.3 million. At Team NST, we mean business. Call 683-7000. Medicare annual enrollment ends December 7th. So now's the time to start getting treated like more than just a number. With Cigna Medicare Advantage, the affordable plan that treats you like a whole person, body and mind. Get the right plan for the right price. Call 1-855-738-0423. With Cigna, you get one plan for all your benefits, a team of doctors for your overall health, and healthy living programs to save you money. Plus, no monthly premium and only a $5 specialist copay. Don't miss your chance to get more coverage for less. Switch to Cigna today to get a complete plan that fits your budget. Don't wait. Call now to get your free Medicare Advantage Guide. Call 1-855-738-0423. That's 1-855-738-0423. Or visit GetSignaMedicare.com. Cigna, together all the way. Has the insurance company offered you a ridiculous settlement for your car wreck injury? Just say no. It was a bad car wreck. My leg was broken and I was out of work for three months. I called Mike Montesi. Mike came out swinging and got me respect fast. He got me money for my medical bills, lost wages, for my pain and suffering, and car repairs. Montesi got me way more than what I expected and without the hassle of going to court. this week with Richard Ransom. All right, we're back for our last segment here to talk about a couple of things. First of all, let's talk about Mayor Jim Strickland, who uh, uh, is getting ready to start a second term, and we learned that he is going to uh, have a new general counsel, a new chief of staff, 
a new special counsel. Uh, all three of those positions, Bruce McMullen, Lisa Jeter, and Maria Munez Blanco, and Alan Crone, four positions, uh, the parks director, Maria, is uh, all stepping down. Is this, are you hearing anything that makes this exciting or interesting, or is this just what happens when a, a lawmaker or a, a mayor has, gets ready to start his second term? I don't, I don't think that there's anything unusual about this. I mean, there are a lot of people who serve, even in high-ranking positions in local administrations, they serve one term, and if the um, person gets reelected, they want to move on. They, they don't want to spend the entire time uh, in, in uh, municipal government. So I don't see anything unusual about this. Um, you know, especially the lawyers want to go back to practicing law. And so uh, 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 there is really no reason to raise any kind of alarms. There might be more money in it if going back to practicing law than working for city government. Yeah, probably. And, that might be a reason. And doing it now because, yeah. uh, and, and not waiting till later on, I think is a lot. But smart. I think we're going to still see Bruce McMullen doing some work for the city as a private lawyer. It wouldn't surprise me at all. And, and Bruce has, McMullen has been a part-time city attorney, yeah. and uh, his replacement will be a full-time city attorney. And the others, I mean, I think it's the natural ebb and flow of, of government. People yeah. come and people go. Sometimes they go in the middle of a term and sometimes at the end of a term. But um, there are only four and uh, the rest seem to be staying. So I, I think that um, the volatility of this administration is virtually nothing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a smooth sailing thing. The two that will be, whose loss will be most felt, Lisa Jeter, who has been someone who has worked in the city government for decades in the city council and now with the mayor. She is a hard-working person who doesn't get the credit she deserves. She keeps things operating. And I believe her deputy, that I can't think of the name, who serves under her is going to replace her in that position. These workers who work in both the mayor's office and especially the city council's office are sometimes the most overlooked workers in our, in our government. They do a lot of the situations. They explore and they investigate laws for the council members. Lisa Jeter is going to be tough. Alan Crone has done, a, has done a good job. Alan Crone has been the mayor's kind of like the guy I talk to when I got a problem. Mm -hmm. It's confidant, someone who can, you well, know, they, they go way like, back. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. And he'll be, he'll be missed as well, but I don't know. The others have. Uh, you know, let's move on. <laughs> okay. You know, I mean, we will move on. Let's move on to topics too. Uh, let's talk about school vouchers because there was a develop, development there this week that was pretty significant, got a lot of people uh, fired up, and that was uh, this comment as as the education commissioner uh, Penny Schwinn was addressing state representatives in a committee meeting, I believe, committee hearing, and said, yeah, we have concluded that the $7,300 voucher that would go to each and every family for each and every child who takes part in the school voucher program is taxable, which raised all kinds of ire that federal, federal tax, I might add, would, would come into play here and made a lot of people question, including supporters, well, I don't know if I really want to get behind this if a lot of that money becomes taxable. Then later in the week, a, a statement was issued by the Department of Education, we assume at the behest of the governor, <laughs> that says, uh, no, never mind, it's not taxable, we're going to count that as a scholarship. So that apparently is where it sits here. My question to start this off, Otis, is how this is a federal issue the whole debate is over whether it's taxable by the irs well and we just we just have seen recently when people get money uh in the james wiseman case it comes back to haunt them um and i don't think this is all that dissimilar here um this is just another example richard of how this whole voucher issue was half-baked from the beginning. It was railroaded and ramrodded down people's throats. The legislature would not listen to anybody who did not like it. And there were a lot of people in Memphis uh, and Shelby County, including in the school systems, okay. that did not like this plan. And they said, we're not paying any attention to what you say. And now it, there is still a real possibility that some of these families will be put in a different tax bracket that might cost them to lose some other things. And so I just think that this is just a, a, a terrible turn of events and I still haven't gotten any real good reasonable uh, answer from the governor's office as to whether this is or is not. Well I think uh, the state of Tennessee better uh, clarify this with the federal government before they decide to start doling out money. I mean, it's it's the perfect example of the government giveth and the government taketh away. I mean, these it, it, it's a it's a policy, a law that was created by our state to help the people who need it the most, and it's now 
hurting the people who need it the most. So to tax people on a voucher who need that, that voucher, it just seems unconscionable. But the government, our, we elect our, our state government to figure these kind of things out, and they need to do it before the first person gets taxed. All right. Well, Otis, you alluded to this, but I had a very high-ranking Republican here in Shelby County who was against the school voucher bill to begin with say to me, this is what happens when you try to rush something through. Mm -hmm. And you look at all of the different snakes that seem to be under these different rocks as they start to look at the actual implementation of it, and they still think they can make this happen as soon as the next school year. And you just wonder, Mike, what other snakes are there under the rocks? And we don't even know because yeah. all we know is they've hired a lot of bureaucrats so far mm -hmm. to help implement this program. It's mm -hmm. been a cash cow for, for being in government work. Just when I start to really get depressed over how government acts and Memphis and in Shelby County. All I got to do is look down the road, <laughs> and I look at Nashville and say, "Well, they're just following the, you know, what everyone else does in Nashville." How this got to this point is crazy. I mean, how they didn't research this long run is crazy. They were more concerned with just getting it through, finding someone who would vote for it, bumping it down to just having it in two counties in order to get the vote through. Mm -hmm. And these folks look, as Susie said probably can't, are the ones who can least afford to be taxed now run the risk of being taxed and on this. We're laying a lot of the blame on Governor Lee and he should get the blame the buck stops here. But let's not forget the state legislature passed this. They all approved yeah, it. Yeah. Which so is also the subject of a federal investigation. Right. Now that Absolutely. All and speaking of the federals, uh, you know, the, the federal government is, is very supportive of these vouchers as yeah, well. That's right. We had the education secretary in the state supporting right. this. Uh, Donald Trump supports this. And, and so, it's what else can I say? Just one more government <laughs> mess, that's all. We've got several of them to talk about. It keeps <laughs> us in business, is all yeah, I know. Really all right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Here. You ready to catch some fish? Here we go. I'm right here. Being here matters. So when it's time to choose a Medicare plan, know that thousands of us at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee are right by your side in the moments that matter. We can walk you through our all-in-one plans with no monthly premiums, no deductibles on medical or pharmacy, plus dental and vision coverage. We even provide a fitness membership at no extra cost and give you the freedom to choose your own doctors with no referrals required. Whether you're new to Medicare or just looking at your options, we'll offer the expertise that comes from serving Tennesseans for nearly 75 years and the care that comes from being a not-for-profit with a mission to serve. And if you need anything else, we'll be right here. To learn more, visit us online or call us at 888-610-9773. Frontier Western Store Olive Branch is your work and dress boot headquarters. Come see thousands of in-stock boots by Ariat, Rocky, Dan Post, Corral, and many more. Frontier's world-famous boot showroom features the latest styles as well as classics for men, women, and children. Outfit the entire family today. Frontier Western Store, 5880 Goodman Road, Olive Branch, or on the web at FrontierWesternStore.com. Family owned and operated since 1967. Face it, your 9 p.m. routine could use a little excitement. Wake them up. ABC's got you covered with groundbreaking, award-winning dramas. Cool. Something big, I see it happening. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, something big, I see it happening. This is exactly where you want to be. So grab the remote and kick back. Why in the night when 9 p.m. is when awesome begins? Then watch local 24 news at 10. We want to know what you think about today's program. The email is rransom at localmemphis.com, rransom at localmemphis.com. My thanks to Otis, Susan, and Mike for being here today. We appreciate it. And thanks to you at home as well. Hope you'll join us next week for Local 24 This Week. Don't be cheap.